Howdy, howdy. My name is John, and this video is a discussion of the book and movie Tuck Everlasting. This video contains spoilers, so proceed at your own risk. The first thing I want to talk about is the theme of the wheel used throughout the novel. I counted six chapters where the imagery of a wheel is used. Of course, this wheel represents the life cycle, and so you see the wheel in how the sun moves. You see uh, the image of a Ferris wheel is brought to play. You see the image of a wheel when May swings the shotgun. The tucks, by drinking the spring, have managed to get off of the wheel and stop traveling on it. One of the questions that comes to mind while reading this novel is, how is it that only the Tucks and Winnie have discovered this spring? And while it's not explicit in the novel itself, I think this time that I read it through, I actually think there's a magic protecting the spring from discovery against those who will use the spring selfishly. One thing I find fascinating about this novel is how the perspective of immortal life changes based off of who is speaking. Angus has the perspective of a middle-aged man, and while I do think his perspective is focused on a little bit too much in this novel, I did find myself identifying with it more now as I am a middle-aged man myself. When I read this when I was younger, I definitely identified more with the uh, perspective of Jesse than I did with Angus. Especially on this reread, one of my favorite scenes was Angus and Winnie in the canoe out on the pond. I lost my dad in 2011. I lost my mom in 2018, and these scenes really remind me that while death sucks, it's still a part of natural life, and I was lucky to have my parents as long as I did. One interesting question that I never, that the book does not explore, and that I wish that it would have, is that at in the epilogue, the tree and the spring that the tucks drank from is destroyed. That makes me wonder, what does this mean for the tucks? The tree actually died. The spring was destroyed. Does this mean at some point the tucks can uh, die themselves? Is there some process by which uh, the, the, the magic done by the spring can be reversed? It's something I would like to see explored in a future novel. Finally, let's discuss what's revealed in the epilogue. The fact that Winnie did not drink from the spring and she died an old woman. Presumably uh, a life filled with happiness and children and grandchildren. Of course, the novel doesn't outright tell us this, but it's easy to assume that from what's given. So did Winnie make the right decision? Even when I read this as I was younger, I had the feeling that Winnie had in fact made the right decision. Again, Angus Tuck's viewpoint on this subject predominates the novel, so it's easy to come to the conclusion that's, that's what Winnie should have done. But here again, as I noted in my non-spoiler section, this book answers ask a what-if question. What if you could choose to stop aging? If you sat down and thought about it, would you? And I think this novel brings us to the conclusion that even if we had the opportunity, we really should choose to live our lives as it, as it is lived. We are born, we grow old, and we die. We miss those who have gone on before. 
but we welcome those who are new to the world. The last thing I want to mention is, in comparison between the book and the movie, I actually thought it made sense for the movie, for the movie to have Jesse to show up in the epilogue instead of May and Tuck in the book. I thought this was a nice touch because while the whole family really fell in love with Winnie, it was really Jesse who imagined a future with her. So what did you think of this book and the movie? Let me know in the comments below. Did Winnie make the right decision? Thank you for watching this video and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day.